Welcome to the How to Survive podcast, episode 17. This week we're talking about a three-ton man-eater with a nasty set of teeth and fishy breath. But no, it's not your mum, it's Steven Spielberg's Jaws. All right there, Chris. Hello, how are you? Very well, thanks. Good. Good, good to have you, as ever. Uh, yes. So this week, Jaws 1975, the Steven Spielberg classic. And obviously, as always, Joe will be uh, diving straight into the movie, not mm-hmm. worrying about spoilers or anything. So if yeah. you haven't seen Jaws, you've had literally 40 years to do so. Exactly. So what have you been waiting for? Yes. Although I will admit, this was the first time I'd seen it. Well, at least you've fixed that now. Yes, exactly. Um, so, yep, yeah, if you haven't seen it, do go to our website. You can find a link to buy it if you, uh, you want to own it on DVD. Mm-hmm. And it is a film that everyone should see. Mm-hmm. Most people should own. Exactly. Apart from thalassophobes. What's that then? It's a phobia of deep water... What, not deep water mammals or deep well, water? Well, like deep water and uh, things that could be in, in deep water. So what's hidden in the water? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm going to run through the synopsis. Sure. I, want to, I want to establish everything we need to know uh, before we talk about how we're going to survive the events of the film. Of course. So we open on a beach party where two teenagers break away from the group and they go skinny dipping. And the girl swims out to sea and is summarily eaten by a shark. Hmm. Uh, we're next introduced to our hero, Police Chief Martin Brody, who's running all over town, dealing with the, the pressing issue of the girl who has been eaten by a shark. Mm-hmm. Uh, he plans to close the beaches, you know, for safety reasons, because the girl's been eaten by a shark. Yeah. Uh, but he's held back by the town mayor, Larry Vaughan, who insists that closing the beaches will result in the bankruptcy of the entire town, because, of course, it's a tourist destination, and it's the middle of the holiday season. Naturally, the inevitable happens, and uh, a child is eaten by a shark. Mm-hmm. So a bounty is offered for the capture of this shark. Money, not just a chocolate bar. No, exactly, yeah. $3,000. Yeah. Um, In 1970s money. So yes, I assume yeah. That is. So, actually, we'll come to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bounty is offered for the shark, and the shark is caught. But it turns out everyone in the know knows that it is the wrong shark. Mm-hmm. The people in the know are the shark experts. They are Matt Hooper, a marine biologist from the mainland, and Quint a uh, local fisherman with a, a penchant for killing massive sharks. <laughs> yeah, he's got a dark history with uh, yeah. sharks. Yeah, but which we'll learn more later, I'm sure. Mm. Uh, the mayor convinces everyone that this is the right shark, but uh, he soon learns the error of his ways when another person ends up dead. Mm-hmm. If it was the chief Brody, uh, Matt Hooper and Quint, uh, a trio, three musketeers, uh, mm-hmm. to, to set out, sail into deep waters and wrangle the shark themselves. And the shark gives a good fight, fight goes on for a few days. He smashes their boat to bits, killing Quint in the process, mm-hmm. and eventually sinks them. But Brody manages to put away one good shot with his rifle, puncturing a pressurized oxygen canister in the shark's mouth mm-hmm. and compromising jaws to a permanent end. Mm. And the movie ends with Brody and Hooper swimming back to shore on a makeshift raft. Yeah. They're sa- literally sailing into the sunset. Yep. So that's the plot. What did you think of it, Chris? Uh, well, I've seen Jaws a couple of times before, mm-hmm. and I think it's great. I think it's it's legitimate in in how it's talked about. You know, it's, it's obviously revered as one of like the all-time American yeah. it's classics. A, it's a pop cultural icon. Yeah, I mean, like um, when your theme tune mm. has become a cliche, yeah. like the opening two notes of the theme tune, the yeah. like everyone knows, even people who haven't seen Jaws, yeah, that, yeah. know that what it means. theme tune. Yeah. What that meaning is. Like, you know, it's a, it's a significant cultural, you know... Milestone. Milestone, yeah. or a cultural icon. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I think, it, I, I think still it's, it's a great film, like, mm-hmm. in its own right, outside of the whole, you know... Ferrari around it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's, um, like, Steven Spielberg is, even at this point in his career, like, obviously really talented as a director. Yeah, and it... It's a very well-made film. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, like they, they had a load of trouble making it. You know, yeah, they had yeah. like various mechanical sharks and things that were a pain to work with and that sort of thing. But like to 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 have um, you know produced the film that they did at the time and with what was probably a very limited budget mm. comparatively to what Steven Spielberg gets now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 really something, and um, it's an artistically significant film. I yeah. Think. Yeah, I agree with you in terms of filmmaking. I think it's excellent. Mm-hmm. I think in terms of the story, the tension is pretty consistent throughout, um, except towards the end where it peters out a bit. I think the, the part on the boat at the end goes on a bit too long. Okay, just for me, but you know. Yeah, it's the sort of like whole mm. s- 
like almost second half or like yeah. you know and as I mentioned I hadn't seen it before so I it had a lot to live up to in the sense of yeah the, yeah the, the, totally the the reputation exactly exactly I think you need to suspend disbelief quite a lot uh, which you obviously with the Spielberg film you need to do it anyway so Jurassic Park or mm -hmm. Close Encounters yeah. but I think this is so grounded in a real world that like shooting a, a canister to blow it up we all know that wouldn't happen and that makes it a bit unbelievable um, yeah, no, it does. It is like it does border on sort of proper Hollywood territory. Yeah, I mean, it's like the first summer blockbuster. Right, well, exactly. It's the yeah. film that started summer blockbusters. Mm. Like people never used to release films in the summer. Yeah, and then Jaws came along and changed all that. But like you know, it is. I, I understand what you mean. It's not like a grounded. It's not like a. I guess like a horror film. Like next week, mm. we're going to be talking about Back Country. Yeah, which is very grounded. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, there's no. Uh, it doesn't Gas ask canisters. you to spend your disbelief at all. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's uh, Chekhov's oxygen canister. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I like the character of Quint. I thought he was very cool to start with, and he's got that very iconic uh, nails down the chalkboard mm. way to get people's attention, yeah. which has been parodied far and wide. I think it's been in The Simpsons about 15 times. <laughs> uh, but he went a bit pear-shaped towards the sort of second act. Okay. Um, he starts out being this, like, salty sea dog, like, oh, I'll get that shark. And then yeah. he goes to this like kooky pirate. Uh, well, like, I think he's always just been a bit mad, isn't he? Yeah. But he like he, you know he's he's constantly doing the uh, farewell to yeah. <laughs> like uh, but uh, yeah, I th I think I, I quite I quite like him, and obviously there's there's the the scene the Indianapolis monologue mm -hmm. where he talks about his history, where he's yeah you he, know yeah. he's on the ship that was uh, delivering the bomb yeah. And uh, you know his ship sunk, and uh, his crew got picked off one by one mm. by sharks. Yeah, uh, it sort of gives like a personal motive for him, in yeah. which is sort of like it's it's quite Captain Ahab, you know, like quite yeah, like I get it, it, yeah, I get that. And his death is quite like Captain Ahab's as well, you yes. know, like dragged under by the by the thing he's trying obsession. to kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like like I said, this is like a relatively early stage of Spielberg's career, but you can like already tell there's like you know his flair is there already like one thing that Spielberg is pretty famous for it's like where most people will have one will have like three or four different shots within a scene he loves to do them in one and they might not be like a sort of you know five minute long tracking shot that people will find on YouTube and be like oh that's really amazing mm, yeah. but it, like a 50 second scene some films would have like five or six different shots and he'll do it in one you know like start in one position but it's wide like go in and then turn and all that sort of thing yeah, yeah. like there's the scene uh, where Chief Brody and the mayor are on uh, a boat that's going across the river mm -hmm. and the, the camera actually remains still yeah. but like the the motion like that that conversation could have taken place anywhere but he puts it in this like interesting you know location yeah. where there's like constantly movement going on and the way the way the background and stuff moves changes the power relation in the in the conversation yeah so it starts out Brody's in control and then throughout that shot everyone sort of walks away from him and it gets the world seems to be getting away from him yeah and like there are two very very good jump scares right in the in the film as well and um often you know like especially nowadays if you watch a horror film there's like jumpy moments it's usually just you know everything's quiet and then Ah, like yeah, yeah. something jumps out, and you know, there's like a musical sting and everything. Whereas with these, it's like um, the t the two that I'm talking about are when Hooper is diving, and looking at the right. shipwreck, yeah. and this corpse floats into view. Yeah. And then the second one is um, when Brody is shoveling Chum off the back of the boat, and it pops up, and it yeah. comes up in the background. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's the f like that's the best view by that point that you've had had of the shark. Mm -hmm. And like what I love about those two things is that. There's no, it doesn't cut to the scare. It's like it it has a it has a shot established, and then the the thing that's scary like invades the screen. Like the corpse like floats into view really suddenly, and Jaws obviously like rises out of the water. Mm -hmm. We call him Jaws. The yeah. shark mm -hmm. comes out of the water all of a sudden, and that's like both of them are really really well done. Like and like you know, great moments. So there's a few key scenes I think we should discuss, mm -hmm. um, particularly in terms of what we learn about the shark and how we can then um, put that information to our benefit when we talk about how to survive. Sure. So the first is the 
not the first beach attack, uh, but the the second one where the, the child on the lilo is attacked. Mm-hmm. That's the scene where Brody sort of sat in a deck chair in, as a sort of lifeguard. I guess he's not the lifeguard. But he's well, he's he's just there with his family, isn't he? But it's like a sort of he's he's looking over the beach and the mm. sea and all the people who are bathing. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really well done as well. Like the cutting is is always like, um, if you watch the scene, like there, there are actually a lot of varied shots, and like it steadily grows closer, like zooms in on different things and then mm-hmm. zooms out again, and he's looking around. Where it, like you can tell that he's like scanning for the danger, but they're always they're always masked by like someone walking in front of him. Yeah. So you get this constant sense of like trying to lean round. The per- like, have you just seen something and, and yeah, like, yeah. you're desperately trying to look round the person? And there's, there's the red herring, like um, the guy with the swimming cap. Yeah. It's a bad hat, Harry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that scene is important because it tells us that this shark will attack anyone on a crowded beach. There's no mm-hmm. such thing as safety in numbers around this guy. Yeah. And he won't necessarily just go for the biggest meal either. He will attack children. So, mm. so don't just stand next to a fat person if you uh, want to yeah. be safe. Although, it, to be fair, the child is on a lilo. So it could be that it mistook the child for a hippopotamus or something. <laughs> um, yeah, giant red hippopotamus. Yeah, but uh, the other thing, the important thing that this tells us, is that people can't be relied on to help each other. Because mm. as soon as there's any threat of a shark, people are clambering over each other, stamping each other's heads into the sand to get away from it and get back to shore. Yeah, there's, um, it's a very well done scene generally. The, the famous shot from it, mm. which is like the reverse dolly zoom yeah. shot, is like the, the vertigo sort of thing. Yeah, it's like one of the best moments I think in cinema. Yeah. Like because he sees the boy being dragged off his lilo by yeah. the shark, and then it does the whole like background shift. Like I like I can't think of a way. Like I can't think of a better way of uh, putting on camera mm. that feeling where you like yeah. where you do like a sort of gasp and you go like like yeah, yeah, yeah. and see something like terrifying. Like it, it's such a such a brilliant way of representing that visually. But like one one thing, I mean, you said people don't help one another. Mm. Like it's quite quite an alarming lack of common sense, particularly by Brody. Yeah. Like it's he, not as though he's heard rumours of a shark. He's seen the <laughs> outcome from yeah. the first victim, and he's still like, like led by the mayor into saying. We'd open the beach. He should have been saying no. There's but a it's shark his, his, his own kids are there. I know. Like even if he can't stop like the public going on there, he's just like his wife's like, oh, we can get them to just play on the beach. It'll mm. be they'll be all right. And he's like, oh no, just uh. that'd be like, fine. Out of awkwardness, yeah. like risking his children's lives just he's, because he's, he's not a very good police chief, is he? Particularly for a well, town where, I mean, the, the main. The main, surely the main like interest is going to be at the beach mm. or on the on the docks. But he seems to have a, a deep rooted fear of water and boats. Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's made a it's a point made of it, isn't yeah. it? A um, terrible choice for mm. um, for the police chief of that town, I think. Yeah, is is fair a mm. fair comment? Um, yeah, I mean maybe he's trying to get over his phobia of the well, sort water. of um, exposure therapy. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, certainly he uh, he does that by the end. Isn't there, yeah. There's a line at the end, in fact, where he says something along the lines of, um, and to think I used to hate the yeah, city. Yeah, I used to hate the water, yeah. not anymore. Yeah. Um, so the second scene I want to talk about is where they catch the wrong shot. Mm-hmm. They've got it hung up on the beach. Sure. And it, everyone's posing for photos. It's a triumph, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They, they think they've done it. Um, I think this scene's indicative of another thing I noticed, which is, Whenever Brody is sort of thinking, it seems to be about 50 people shouting at him yeah. or shouting at each other. They're just like hoople head, the crowd are like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. and then you hear someone like over the top of them go, I'll tell you something, buddy. <laughs> yeah. right? And but that makes the, the parts where it's really quiet that much more unsettling. I really like the, um, like, similarly, there's the scene early on when he's in the police station mm. and it's like people are just coming in and going, ah, oh, chief, the, the, the karate kids, they're like <laughs> kicking all my fences down. And it's yeah. like such a small time town, like, crime. Yeah. And all, all of the things that they're complaining about, it's like, oh, I can't park outside my store. Yeah. It's yeah. like... And the guy's, he's, the guy's holding up a bicycle tire. Yeah. And he's complaining about something. Yeah, it's, it's great. And like his beset secretary or whatever, yeah. she's like... Oh, do you need those files now? Yeah, like, yeah. It's just like... It's just may- everywhere he goes is mayhem and, and busybodies. Yeah. And it makes it very hard for him to do his job. 
yeah. which is to keep make people safe. Yeah, and of course the the chief busybody is uh, the mayor. Yeah, the mayor who's absolutely obsessed with the idea of bringing people to the beach. Yeah. Even though he knows there's a man eating shark out there. Yeah, yeah. he uh, it's it's very the film is very much about a sort of uh, you know, common sense versus like tourism money. Yeah. Small town attitudes. Yeah. Uh, the, the wrong shark scene, as I've mm-hmm. made a note here, is it tells us that people will believe anything you tell them. Yeah. Even when there's a scientist there saying this is impossible for yeah. it to be the right one. Yeah. And the, the, although he doesn't say it, the, the shark expert sails past like, God, I don't want to. Yeah. But there's, there's no, like they say, don't, don't check the shark. Do check the shark. There's, yeah. There's never been a more appropriate time to check a shark. Well, th- what he says is, I'm not going to cut yeah, cut it open on the dock and have that uh, the bleaker boy out. like yeah. spill out on the. Go take it into a warehouse. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a bit strange that he has to then like sneak in to uh, yeah, d- like disembowel it later on. Like he doesn't put up. He doesn't seem to put up enough of a fight. For no, me. Brody's a bit spineless to my um, to my sensibilities. Mm. Yeah. So like they just they just like grab like literally the first shark they could find. Yeah, they just assume it's like it's, in, ah, it's in, this one. It's fine. <laughs> in shark infested waters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, although in fairness, they do say they they don't have sharks around Amity yeah. Island, so it's it's just one, one in one hundred chance of it being the wrong one, the right one. He says one in one hundred for some reason. <laughs> but and the, the last scene I think is worth talking about is the, the sort of final showdown. Mm-hmm. This is less a scene and more of the entire the last act of the third film. Third of the film. Yeah. yeah. But basically, they it's man versus beast. The shark is shown to be super smart. It can outthink men, three men. <laughs> three fact, men. Yeah, one of which is a, a shark scientist. <laughs> yeah. One of which is expert in, in boats, and one of which, well, expert in... Law. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> the law of the ocean. <laughs> yeah. the, the shark is also revealed to be super strong, able to smash a boat to pieces yeah. by just ramming it repeatedly, and even mm. bend metal bars. Yeah. Um, but we do learn one important thing, and that's it can be killed. Mm. Uh, it's, it's basically it's subject to the laws of nature. <laughs> it's not a mythical. Yeah, it hasn't got uh, supernatural, supernatural or, or any demonic force. Sure. So theoretically, they could have killed it with a gun if it had popped its head out of water for long enough. Yeah. Well, like um, it, I think I, you said that the last third sort of drags on a bit. Mm. What I think is quite interesting is that you like mentioned the Three Musketeers at the start of the podcast, right? And that's like it feels when they're like sailing out into the sea. Yeah. Even though they're on the on the trail of like this incredibly dangerous man hungry mm. shark who's murdered well you know eaten yeah. like four or five people by this point, like it feels like an adventure. Yeah. It's like a sort of almost almost the point of it's like you know Indiana Jones or you know which is obviously another Steven Spielberg film. Yeah, exactly. But like a sort of you know happy family sort of adventure film. Yeah. It suddenly becomes and then it's like what I think what I think is really good is that like the best films will. Uh, communicate the details of things that you don't have any idea about prior to the film, and like make them really coherent mm-hmm. for the audi- you know for the layman. Right. And like we saw that with Everest, right? You, by the end of that, you or throughout that, you had a good handle of you know why certain things were happening when, yeah. and like the problems with climbing the mountain and mm-hmm. you know issues and things like that. Similarly, I think with this, you get a sense of why they're doing what they're doing when they're hunting this fish and you know like the barrels to try and draw like tie it yeah, out exactly, because it yeah. can't swim no one has to stand there and explain every every part of it too yeah them. exactly yeah. and it and and you feel you f- it, it brings you along in a much smoother way mm. than if they as you said stopped and said yeah now here's what we'll do yeah. Yeah. Brody, listen to me <laughs> you said it dragged a bit but i don't i don't think it does i think there's a lot of similar scenes yeah which maybe don't like, because I think the whole film pretty much ramps up the tension on a pretty consistent basis, and yeah. then it reaches a point. I mean, you're always waiting for the shark to appear, for yeah. the next attack or mm. showdown. So I guess having those scenes of nothing happening is important. And it's, it's not really those that are boring, because you know something's going to happen. Yeah. I guess it's the scenes, like the, the part about the, uh, the Indianapolis, mm-hmm. the boat he was on, that has its place, but then it seems like there's a lot of those sort of bipping at each other and carrying on. Yeah, there's a lot of, of scenes where they're, you know, like trying to tie ropes and, you know, um, Brody's annoyed that he's the one having to th- throw Chum out of the yeah. back of the boat rather than uh, Hooper and all that sort of thing. But I think it does, um, I, I'd like to think that it sort of 
pulls you in and lulls you into a sort of full sense of security with it. Like you, it, and it makes the appearances of the shark that much more impactful mm. because you know, like when it appears at the back of the boat when he's shoveling the chum out. And he like, there's that great shot of him like standing bolt upright yeah. in a sort of like really wide eyed like cigarette in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. like, um, but I think also like the interplay between the three characters is really good. Mm. And like that Indianapolis scene before and after that, the 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 central monologue. Yeah, uh, which as we said, it's an amazing scene. Yeah, um, they're like comparing scars and laughing and joking and uh, and you know I think all that is like a like you know they could have done it where you had a crew of eight people yeah. and they got picked off one by one and it probably wouldn't have been as impactful well exactly yeah. it's, it is a very intimate mm. it, it's almost a play yeah yeah it's, it's three like, men and a shark it's a three hand yeah mm. four hander with a shark yeah three hand and one filler <laughs> uh yeah so um with that in mind joe uh is this a slasher film well strictly speaking they're the first to die is yeah. a naked girl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've got down, I, one of the first things I wrote down when yeah. we were rewatching it was uh, first victim hyphen sex equals death hyphen slasher movie. <laughs> Some of the detailed notes we take yeah, here absolutely. at the podcast. But yeah, like it's, uh, you know, picking off one by one. Uh, yeah, true. Th- convince me that it's a slasher film. Uh, lots of false dawns. You think the shark's gone away. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the false shark. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone have sex in the film? Yes, Chief Brody has sex yeah. with his wife. She's oh well, she says, "Do you want to get drunk and fool around?" Yeah, that could mean anything. Yeah, did you know in the novel, Mrs. Brody sleeps with Hooper? I did know that, and I also know that in the original cut for the film, Hooper was supposed to die. All oh, right. Okay. So perhaps he was going more down the uh, the slasher. Movie maybe yeah. Maybe route. maybe it was a late. Yeah. A late tweak to the to the yeah, yeah. final edit. I guess Quint could be like the the old man figure, like the the, the like, wise old man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, from from the slasher film genre. Yeah. Interestingly, his motivation, I guess, is I want to kill a shark because I hate sharks. Mm-hmm. But he also asked for ten thousand dollars, whereas yeah. the the bounty is given at three thousand dollars for every other person. Just in case you're wondering, how much that is in today's money? Yeah. So if you went out now and uh, in your fishing boat with your harpoon. And you call yourself a shark, a uh, 25 foot shark, mm-hmm. weighing three tons. You'd rake in 13,824 pounds. And to our US listeners, that's $20,798 in uh, 2015 money. So not, not a bad outing. That's all right, yeah. Yeah. So it's a hundred and like 2% inflation rate in the yeah. last uh, 40 years. It's a pretty um, tidy sum. Yeah. Those, barrels, those yeah. barrels must be. Um, can't be, can't be cheap though, can they? Or are they just float, yeah, floating? Well, that's the thing. He he does say, doesn't he, um, Hooper? Yeah. And he says, "I'm rich." Yeah. He says, "Who paid for all this?" Oh, me. Are you rich? Yeah. How much? And he said, "Well, yeah." Yeah. Well, he's like the, like the dynamic between them is like one's the, like uh, one's the book smart one and one's the street smart one. Yeah. Isn't it? About yeah. sharks, you know, like you can read all the books you want. Not your fancy college degrees. <laughs> so a book's not going to teach you uh, how to fight a shark. Well, maybe it'll teach you how to survive, though, Jay. Yeah, and we talk about that uh, now. So, Chris, I want to talk about how to survive, but first, let's establish what we need to know. What do we know after all that? Well, we know that the shark is 25 feet long and weighs three tons. It is super smart by shark standards, mm-hmm. super strong by anything standards. Yeah. Boat standards. Yeah. It will uh, attack anyone or anything who is unfortunate enough to grab its attention. Yeah. Uh, it's willing to go to extraordinary lengths to fight back, including beaching itself on a boat and, uh, and ramming things. Yeah. And you have pretty much no chance of survival if it is managed to get hold of you. Hmm. But it can be killed. Mm-hmm. Well, they, um, it, do, it doesn't seem to... It's not feeding, is it? Mm, yeah, I guess. Is it feeding? Do we know? Well, we don't, when, yeah, we, we don't, he never says I'm doing this because uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, when, uh, in that scene where uh, Brody's tied to the chair yeah. and Jaws is explaining his plan. His master plan, yeah. yeah to take over Amity. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, but it's a, it's a scary beast. I think, mm. like, uh, wild, like, uncontrollable animals is yeah. pro- are probably, like, the scariest 
um, like non monstery thing in the world. Yeah, I mean, a physical thing. Yeah, like yeah. A, a thing that's not sort of, Out of a fictional. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Like, um, and we'll talk about this again next week mm-hmm. when we talk about back country. Yes. I think the uh, the scary thing about it as well is that you're um, obviously you're on it, its territory, in its territory. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if, uh, you, if, you, if you literally, if you're on the beach, it's not going to be able to attack you. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I assume when we talk about how to survive, we, we discount yeah. just don't go in the water. Yeah, because in theory, that is within the capabilities and motivations yeah, yeah, yeah. of every single character in the film. Yeah. Except apparently the mayor, who mm. would who'd have everyone. He'd uh, rather see, see 10,000 murdered tourists than 1,000 unhappy visitors who can't go on the beach. And for that reason... Is this week's How to Survive Hero. <laughs> <laughs> Should we start doing that? Yeah. How to Survive Hero. Yeah. All right. So well done to Mayor Larry Vaughan for yep. being a How to Survive Hero. Yeah. So let's get to it. Chris, that's why we're here. Mm-hmm. How would you survive the events on Amity Island in 1975? Well, uh, so... So we've established that it, the monster is essentially just a big shark, a big smart shark. Yeah. Right? It's not supernatural, it's not no, radioactive. No, it's, it it's is not, a shark, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I wonder if you're interested to know uh, official advice if you find yourself uh, in a uh, shark attack well, situation. I, I always like to read the guidebook before I go sure. into it. So, well, uh, yeah. I know this wouldn't be available to uh, people in 1975, but I assume a, a you know, similar source would be available in yeah. the form of a book or whatever. Uh, but... Um, this is from WikiHow, okay. uh, How to Survive a Shark Attack. Yeah. Um, first of all, keep it in sight, all right? Right, right. They yeah. like to swim in circles, <laughs> you know, underneath you and all that sort but of thing. But don't close your eyes. Yeah, no, yeah. exactly. Don't, don't, let it, don't let it sneak up on you no. <laughs> or attack you from behind because yeah. you're going to be in trouble. Right. right. And they do that in the film because they use the barrels to, as an indicator of where it is. Yeah, smart. Um, so that's, that's good. Uh, don't try to outswim it. No, that's because um, they, they can swim. Yeah, sharks famously better in water than on land. Yeah. Uh, they, are, they are built for the water, Joe. Yeah, um, whereas, whereas humans, famously, less so. Yeah, less so. Not, yeah. yeah. Um, even if you're wearing flippers yeah. or scuba gear or whatever, you, it's very unlikely. Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> the shark would have to be um, pretty tired. Or yeah, well, you know, yeah. it's, 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 it's not a good idea, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's inadvisable. Thirdly, try to hide somewhere or get somewhere where you have your back to a, a an object or something like that. So, so what was you saying? Let it back you into a corner. Almost, yeah. Like Hooper, for example, hides in amongst the sort of seabed. Yeah. Isn't he? Like and things like rock coral and things like that mm-hmm. are are good defences because it's harder for the shark to sort of swim. Yeah, it would, to it would, get it would you. hurt itself on the rocks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's less inclined to mm-hmm. go after you. So that's fair enough. Uh, fourth bit of advice is uh, if you if you, you have to resort to it, fight it off. Mm. Uh, it's as simple as that. Hit it in the face and gills. Yeah, I've, I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, like poke its eyes, yep. all those sorts of things. It doesn't like that. No, no uh, few things do. Um, yeah, if we ever meet a monster talking about a film that relishes being poked <laughs> in the eyes, we're in trouble. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the article helpfully states keep fighting, uh, which is good. And then the fifth point, so which is... Don't throw in the towel. Yeah. yeah, and the fifth point, uh, which even more helpfully, is uh, escape. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, they, so yeah. if you want to survive a shark attack, uh, just escape. Just, 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 just survive. Yeah. Remove yourself from the situation. Well, I think that's. Thank you, WikiHow. Yeah, the, exactly. The massively uh, insightful guide to how to survive. A I shark mean, attack. why why we didn't think of that in the first place? Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's to, to just. Yeah. If you're being attacked by a shark, don't. Don't Google how to survive a shark attack and go on WikiHow. Yeah, because that is just it, like the headline is just escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just leave, leave the situation. Now I, I'm aware, by the way, that WikiHow is, is kind of built on answering these high search volume questions because they know they're going to get a lot of um, viewers to their pages. So that there, there is obviously a high proportion of people who are searching how to survive a shark attack. Yeah. But it can't be useful to any of them, really, because the only time you're going to need to know that is when you're in the water with a shark. Yeah, and if and if if you're uh, if you're googling how to survive a shark attack, yeah, uh, you must be planning on going in the water. Yeah. No one who's going, I'm I'm going to go nowhere near water ever again. Yeah, is going to look up how but to survive a shark. But just in case yeah, I, exactly. a shark gets on land or something. Yeah, and if you are googling it, you're 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 breaking the first rule of what you just said is uh, keep it in sight. 
Because if you're staring at your yeah. phone, like, yeah, mm. unless you can, maybe there's like a, a second screen app, yeah, or something that you could, or like one of those VR things where you can hold it up, right? Like and a, then it's a Google, 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 yeah, exactly. Google okay, goggles. Oh, okay, Google, yeah, uh, tell me how to survive this. Look at the shark. Keep looking at the yeah, shark. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, 3G coverage in 1975, very, very poor, yeah, yeah, in the open ocean particularly. So, um, not necessarily. Uh, well, I mean, like. Basically, though, I think this is a flawless method of survival that yeah. I've gleaned from this article because yeah, yeah. because I'm pretty sure that every one of the characters would have survived if they had have escaped. Yes, that's true. So, I mean, we we can go through them. The girl, yeah, if she had have escaped, then she wouldn't have she wouldn't have died. No, that's it. Uh, <laughs> the kid on the lilo, uh, he gets it. He, he didn't escape. Didn't um, he? No, that's, that's very wrong. But he did, yeah. yeah. But if he had escaped, he probably wouldn't have yeah, died. Yeah, yeah. There's the guy who gets mauled when he's in the dinghy. Yeah, yeah. Um, when he gets he and his leg go. leg falls to the sea floor. Right. Uh, he didn't escape. No, he didn't. Um, yeah. So uh, Quint, as well. Oh yeah. Um, but did he, he escaped though. No, he no, he, oh, no, he didn't escape. He doesn't he didn't escape. escape. Yeah, um, yeah. Chief Brody does escape. Yeah. And he survives. Yes, that's true. So we can draw. We can. Do, there's a correlation between following the advice in this article that says escape yeah. and surviving. So I think my first idea on how to survive is to, is to escape. <laughs> well, I, I can't argue with you. Yeah, no, yeah. it's fine. I don't think I'm breaking any of the rules. No, no you're not. No, fair enough. Yeah. Well, very well done. I think you, you put it in it. You set out an early stall with that one. Sure. Um, I'm going to go for one that's kind of similar to that. Um, okay. Anyway, I was having a chat with um, a colleague at work who is a, is a diver. Mm -hmm. And I said, how would you survive? And he said, well, to swim down. Okay. Because sharks, um, they attack upwards. Right. So, you know, they in, in, even in the film, so we're not breaking the, 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 yeah, yeah, the yeah. logic of the fiction of the film. Okay. He only ever attacks shark, uh, people who are on the surface. Okay. But the only person he doesn't attack is Hooper. Hooper, when he swims down. Okay. Because sharks attack upwards, so right. just get below it. Okay, that's it. What and stay there forever? Stay there, yeah. like live your life out. Or maybe on hold on, seafloor. hold on to the underside of the shark. And <laughs> <laughs> let him just, like, just build a life, build a home for yourself yeah, yeah. on the sea floor. Like a like a constantly moving. On a whale. Whenever you see it coming lower, yeah, then just go to the the deepest point of the ocean, Mariana Trench. Yeah, yeah. and um, but don't go there because the it follows monsters. It's right? gonna be there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nightmare, yeah. but he's not going to attack you. So no, it's fine. Okay, refer to episode two for context. Yes. Um, so we were talking about uh, one of the key scenes of the film earlier, Joe, um, where Quint, where Quint details his history with sharks. Yeah. And he was on the US USS Indianapolis. Yep. Yeah. Uh, delivering the bomb, he says, to nuclear Hiroshima. bomb. Yeah. So, yeah, which was dropped on. Uh, dropped on Japan to mm -hmm. end the war. One suggestion for survival. Right? Mm. We've established that it's not supernatural. In fact, it can be blown up. Yeah. We see that at the end of the film. Um, drop the bomb on sharks. All of them. Just the sharks, which will kill the sharks in the first instance, but it will also uh, cause a deep-lying fear of both men and boats and bombs yeah. uh, among generations of sharks to come. Once bitten, twice shy. Exactly. Mm. So... Um, yeah, they, they they will fear boats. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jaws is presumably a relatively young shark. Well, yeah. I mean, um, is he as old as Quint? Do you think? Do you think it's? Do you think Jaws and Quint? Do you think Jaws was from that incident? I don't. I I don't because Quint specifies that they were tiger sharks, not I see, right. not okay. great whites. But he doesn't. He, he doesn't say great whites weren't there. Yeah, I'll grant you one possible. Uh, risk that yeah. I had with this survival ploy uh, was that obviously radiation yeah. um, um, it may cause a generation of uh, super sharks yeah bigger radioactive sharks, yeah, sharks yeah, yeah, yeah. which could could be like Jaws and also you probably would have lost the war yes so right. um, that, in the, in the name the... of killing some sharks yeah uh, so it's not and, and, and also they're in the Pacific waters so presumably the Japanese would have captured the sharks and used them to further militarise their hmm you know, the campaign. Yeah. Where, which coast is Amity Island on? Mm, I think it is off the coast of sort of New York. So it's, in okay, the, so around it's the East Cape, Coast. Cape Cod area. Okay. Listen, so, listen, listen to the show. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So, <laughs> east, so we think East Coast. Yeah. I think because the, if it was West Coast, Amity Island might bear the brunt of any full frontal shark related assault from the Japanese. No, Navy. no, this is definitely East Coast. Because Cape, okay. it's Cape Cod, which I think is East Coast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Well then, yeah. I mean, the, the risks specifically for Amity Island, probably relatively low then. Yeah. Uh, in, in, the, in, in the nuclear... In terms of yeah. nuclear-powered yeah, yeah, superstructure. Mm. Yeah, okay. so talk me through it again. Just summarise so, um, drop the drop the bomb mm -hmm. on the sharks. Okay, flawless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take it back to a little more serious. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't <laughs> <laughs> they? I, I appreciate it. I appreciate sure, it. sure. Yeah. But I want, I, I want to give some actual advice. Mm -hmm. um, a bit of business acumen, maybe. Now, the mayor of the town, Larry Vaughan, mm -hmm. our hero of the week. Yeah, great guy. He, he seems to be obsessed with the idea of getting people in the water to the point where he, he's, he's panicked all week about <laughs> we're not going to get people into town, we're not going to get them here because they're scared of the shark and if we close the beaches, they're, they're not going to come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they come, thousands and thousands of people. The beach is absolutely packed, but no one's going in the water. So mm. he's going around, going up to people and saying, why don't you get in the water? Mm. This, that, they, he's not going to get more money from them being in the water. <laughs> yeah. right? So my advice to him is go, go back three, four days and build swimming pools on the island, yeah. which you can charge entry for. Say okay. the, beaches, the beaches are closed. They could be tidal, uh, tidal um, filled as well. You know, like they, they, could, they could wash out mm. the sea. So there's salt water. You're getting a salt water experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, they could just pen in you know, a pools. swimming area. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's always a risk that the, the shark would come in with the tide. Yeah. Swimming pools, I'm saying. Charge them $2 a head. Yeah. And you've, what, you've solved the problem of there's not enough business in town. Yeah, you've solved true. the problem of people are getting eaten by sharks. Yeah. The win-win situation. Yeah. And anyone who is stupid enough to go to the sea. On their head, beer, yeah, I Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. They deserve everything they get. Yeah, precisely. Mm. Yeah. My final um, uh, method of survival mm -hmm. uh, is based on... Um, Chief Brody's famous line. Yeah, uh, we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, I was surprised by that because, I, as we mentioned, I hadn't seen the film, yeah. and everyone talked about. It. We needed a bigger. I was expecting it to be like, we're going to need a bigger boat, or you know, oh man, we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, but it's actually like we're going to need a bigger. Boat. Yeah, he sort of says it like to himself, doesn't yeah. he? Like, oh no, oh, we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. Uh, so with that in mind, um, the biggest ship in the world yeah. is uh, called the Prelude. Right, uh, and uh, it's four hundred and eighty-eight meters long. Right, okay. um, and it's a nat natural gas facility. Yeah. Uh, so sails out to you know areas where there's natural gas under the sea, and is, uh, you know farms it, collects it, whatever mm. you call it. Um, uh, therefore, it's impossible to need a bigger boat. Yeah, if you're on that boat, it's the biggest boat. Um, so the largest shark, right? Well, it's, it's the largest shark that's ever been recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, the one in Jaws is 25 foot. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, the largest shark ever recorded was 2,000 pounds in weight, mm. um, and it was 18 meters long. Okay. Wow. Which is, which is huge. That's, not, that's um, like a megalodon shark. Yeah, yeah, it's not uh, insubstantial. Yeah. yeah. Um, but by comparison, the Prelude, the ship, is uh, 488 meters long. Right, right. Uh, and it weighs 260,000 tons. Okay. Um, so that's 27 sharks nose to nose. 27 of the biggest shark ever <laughs> nose to nose yeah. to uh, fill up one length of the prelude. Uh, therefore, it's impossible to get a bigger boat. Right now, Quint, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> go on. Quint, Brody, and Hooper, yeah. they get into trouble because their boat isn't big enough. <laughs> it's not the biggest boat. <laughs> it's yeah. not the biggest boat, no. right? And like, let, let's, let's analyze that for a minute. So. They shoot the barrels yeah, onto it, yeah, yeah. Um, and it and it's able to pull, use its strength to pull the boat. In fact, it almost capsizes the boat. Yeah, the exactly. You know, like it's pulling it so hard, the um, the cleats on the side of the boat get pulled off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's chaos. You know, and then eventually Jaws mounts the boat. Yeah, and uh, climbs aboard. Climbs aboard it, and um, uh, yeah, is able to is uh, able to sink it, destroy it. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, that sort of thing. That's not going to happen with the Prelude. Not with the um, biggest boat in the world. No, uh, no, it's the size of the Empire State Building laid on its side, <laughs> uh, and uh, presumably uh, the height um, of is it, you know it's I, a big boat. It's a big boat. Yeah, um, they're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, they've got the biggest boat in the world. Therefore, Wait, it, I mean, I, I, no, do no, have no, a, I do have I a question. Just, no, I just, is what? Hang on. Is the answer me the answer me this question? Yeah. Is Jaws gonna? Be, if you're on the Prelude, yeah. and you're shooting the barrel, shooting the harpoon thing in the barrel in the shark, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. What is Jaws gonna do? 
Nothing. That's what. Well, he can't do anything, Joe. Yeah, but he's got no if you're, if you're on the two hundred and sixty thousand tons. If you're on the deck of the Prelude, yeah, you'd be you'd have to do a very powerful harpoon. I think wow. it's quite high up. Gravity assisted. Gravity assist. Well, it's in like it's going to be falling from a great height, isn't it? Yeah, but it's going to have the the barrel on the back of it. That's going to diminish. No, its no, speed. no. The harpoon hits the shark, and then the shark swims away, and the rope flies out. Well, the rope would be about half a mile long. <laughs> well, are you telling me that there's not a rope that's half a mile long? Well, there is, but the shark could be half a mile away. Joe, we're on the biggest boat in the world. Right. Are you telling me that if you own the biggest boat in the world? Yeah. And you're using it specifically to hunt sharks yeah, yeah. for thirteen thousand dollars <laughs> yeah. right, a time. Then are you telling me that you're not going to have access to a rope that's half a mile long? I think I probably would. They use piano wire because it's just stronger. Right. Is there piano wire that's half a mile long? Probably. Maybe. There's a big piano. Yeah. But yeah, that's the, the, that's, the world. The biggest so, boat in the world needs the world's biggest piano. Yeah. Well, so like, yeah. I mean the. Um, yeah, I mean, similarly, the Titanic would probably uh, have done a job. Yeah, um, it had its place. Any, any sort of cruise ship, ferry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we think it's I mean, it's uh, well, you're going for the scale. biggest boat, but yeah. any, any boat that's bigger. Any boat that's bigger than yeah. Quint's very... The Orca. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I do have one question. Okay. Was Jaw, this is one weakness, the size of the boat? Um, well, the, the only evidence we have to go on is that the character, the main character in the film, the protagonist, says yeah. we're going to need a bigger boat. Yes. And at no point is he proved wrong. Well, he is because they didn't need a bigger boat. Well, they died and the boat was destroyed. They didn't die. The well, to, to one third of them died. That's a 33% death rate. Well, so you're saying no one would have died. It did 100% success. I, I, I'm pretty certain that no one is going to get... Jaws isn't going to leap up on the back of the prelude. That's what I'm saying. All right, all right. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I can't argue with that. Yeah. Okay, I've got one more. Okay. How to survive. So a big problem is trying to get people sort of afraid of going in the water. Mm -hmm. And what better way to do that than by giving the whole town rabies, which <laughs> famously has a symptom of being Aqua afraid. Aquaphobia. Aquaphobia, yeah. right? Um, and I, I actually, I googled why are people with rabies scared of water, just for a bit of clarity. Mm -hmm. And then I've got this, uh, this explanation, which is from okay. um, Salmon Sedgi. Zadeh. Okay. From the Thanks for emailing in. Yeah. From the University uh, Universitaria San Luigi Gonzaga. Okay. And he answers the question by saying a virus or rabies, the rhabdovirus, mm -hmm. goes up into the termination of the synaptic button and alterates the exchange of electrolytes on the neuron membrane. So there are changes in membrane potentials and that results in spasms automatic. As deglutition is a reflex reflection. Drinking, also your saliva, activates these automatic spasms as a terrible chain of contraction activation that can lead to choking. Although it is rare in humans, common in animals, hydrophobia is caused by the preactivation of deglutition. Mm -hmm. In fact, normally when someone sees water, there is an automatic reflection that is the start of the deglutition chain. So infected patients have fear of water because of this unconscious preactivation of deglutition. And take care, these spasms can lead to a choking because of the dysfunction of the glottis. Okay. I hope that clears it up. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, well, thanks for emailing in. Um, uh, what was his name? Salmon. Okay. Yeah, thanks for emailing in. Uh, yeah, no, I like it. That's a good, uh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, rabies, mm. does that have a 100% death rate? Well, no, not quite. At and the stage which has an effect on your neurological yeah. state, yeah. there is an eight percent chance of survival. Okay. So. So okay. It's what it's Watney's index for living, isn't it? It's the uh, yeah, short term yeah, yeah. gains yeah. for the long term. I guess so. Yeah. Um, yeah. We need to we need to actually uh, define Watney's index. Yeah. And, um, from the Martian and uh, yeah, because that was the idea that you could eat potatoes every day. Yeah. Give yourself. Type 2 diabetes, diabetes yeah. but you would be able to survive in the short term. Yeah, there'd be a net, uh, you'd have a net improvement in yeah. your chance of survival. And, and in this one, I think that you'd have a short term chance of survival because you wouldn't go in the water and get yeah. eaten by a shark. Cause you'd That's be, true. Yeah. So you would, yeah, I mean, is there, I mean, because the, the, the rabies element 
is actually secondary to just making sure people don't go in the water. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, I, I'm going for mass... I don't, I don't want anyone to get eaten by a shark, let's be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, that's the last thing any of us want. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's an easier way... Well, how about this? Because... It's just occurred to me. Okay. Why not give Jules rabies? Then if he's scared of water... So he just he just flies out of the sea. <laughs> yeah. And, like, it's like... When you, himself. You know when you put, like, two magnets, like, yeah, uh, the yeah. same side as one another? Yeah. And they, like, push against they the... Repel, yeah. He, like, he, he flies out of the sea and then he's, like, repelled by the ocean mm. and just... But then he's an airborne shark. That's true. Oh, it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Flying fish. Well... I mean, it's just something to think about. We've had a few letters in from, uh, from listeners mm-hmm. who've uh, got their ideas on how they'd survive in Jaws. Hannah says, I would have told the mayor that the shark they caught didn't have any people in its digestive system. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure why they kept that a secret. That would have kept the beach closed and saved at least one person. Yeah, is, he, is the mayor corrupt to the extent that he would have ignored that anyway, do you think? Well, I don't know, he wasn't like a mafia man, was he? No, but he's corrupt in the sense that his, his primary motive appears to be money over the safety of his citizens. I don't know, because when, when it does go wrong for him, he seems a bit crestfallen, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, but like, he's, a, he's just been caught, isn't he? Basically, he's mm. like been caught out in his gamble. Yeah. You know. I guess you're hinging on, on the mayor's um, willingness to budge on that issue. Yeah. But Hannah goes on, to actually catch the shark... I'd have constructed a large, humane trap, mm-hmm. maybe something like a shipping container, lured the shark in with meat, and then euthanized it nicely. Okay. Uh, I'd have paid for this with the money that was the reward for Quint to catch it, so $10,000. Okay, so for $10,000, how much do you think a shipping container costs? Well, you, you, you're getting... An, in depth. Now. Yeah, all yeah. bells and whistles, yeah. Okay. No, I like that idea. Yeah, mm. no, it's, it's true about the mayor. I think, I think it is just that he's like a... he's. He makes a gamble because he's caught between two things and he's corrupt yeah. internally, essentially. But then he, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is, you know, maybe it is that Brody does tell them, but they just don't want to hear it. Yeah. But still, yeah. you'd stand up for it a bit, I think, if you were Brody. If I was Brody, I would. The other letter comes from Tom. Mm-hmm. He says, I'm just curious about the shark's motives. In the Jaws video game on the PS2, his purpose was to save the environment. So maybe a legitimate tactic would be to find Al Gore and do an inconvenient truth 25 years early. Okay. Right, well, environmental in the sense of what? Like there's too much waste in... Well, I, look, I, I was as intrigued as you are by mm-hmm. this, so I looked it up, and basically it was a bit incoherent on the Wikipedia page. Uh, okay. Listeners, you're welcome to look it up. Jaws, the video game from PS2. It's called Jaws Unleashed, I think, or something okay. like that. Um, because <coughs> he's famously leashed. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, they... they they, in the video game, they take him and put him in a, a park similar to SeaWorld right. where he runs riot and... Uh, it doesn't make sense. Because <laughs> how do you get out of a tank back to the ocean? Huh? How do you... What? Uh, I, just, I was in... Yeah, I see what yeah. you mean. Yeah. I, I don't know. Because <laughs> sharks can't understand environmentalism. Yeah, but they are super smart. But Jaws is dead. He's super smart. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, interestingly... I mean, you may be aware there's a number of sequels to Jaws. Yeah. Um, Jaws 2 mm-hmm. is a fairly standard sequel that marks the return of Chief Brody. Yeah. Jaws 3D after yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And then one in particular, Jaws 4, The Revenge. Right. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of the plot to this one, Joe. Mm, no. I haven't come across that. So Chief Brody dies of a heart attack. He's not in the film. Right, he's, he's dead before it starts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the opening, you know, the, the, the state of affairs that we yeah. find at the start of the film is that Chief Brody's died of a heart attack. Yeah. Um, now, uh, turns out that Ellen Brody... Right. That's uh, his wife. That's his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, ...has developed a psychic link to sharks. And the sharks want revenge on the Brody family for causing the death of Jaws. Who, do they call him Jaws? Well, it's, it's not. There's no dialogue scenes between the sharks. Right. But that's their implied motive, I suppose. And they, but, she moves the Brody family to the Bahamas, where there's warm seawater. I mean, why she doesn't just move to like Minnesota yeah. or something? You know, somewhere Nottingham in the middle of the you know yeah, yeah. country. But she moves to the Bahamas because it's supposedly warm 
water. Sharks don't like it. It's warm seawater. Is that true? Apparently. But then According to the logic of Jaws for right, okay. the revenge. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but the sharks follow them there oh, from me. this psychic link. From this, they they yeah. sniffed her out yeah. through the psychic link. And yeah, uh, yeah it's, um, it's got a 0% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. And it's considered one of the worst sequels and one of the worst films ever. Well, I think we should watch it. I'm intrigued. Famously, Michael Caine yeah. uh, was asked why he did Jaws 4. He's in it. He's in it. He plays, a character, he's, he plays a character called Hoagie, right. uh, who I believe is a pilot. Okay. And uh, he was asked why he did Jaws, uh, The Revenge. And he said, um, he opened the first page of the script and it said, Exterior, The Bahamas. And he said, I'm in. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's Jaws 4. I don't know whether it's in the subtext of the original Jaws that sharks have these powers. Or yeah, indeed yeah. That, that Ellen has these Ellen powers. Ellen Brody has a link with the sharks. Mm. I, well, I mean, what... I want to know what happens in two and three for it to like. To set is the it scene. a gradual? Is it a gradual like <laughs> emergent thing? Like, oh, like well, it, well. the the twist at the end of Jaws two yeah. is that she she sort of got, holds her head and then yeah. there's like a, a, a fading oh. shot of a shark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Or she like, looks out the window with the shark looking at her. Yeah. She's like, whoa. And she they share a nod. Yeah. She said they're having dreams about sharks oh. and they get more and more. I have dreams that I've, that I'm swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Jaws. Jaws indeed. Mm. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as we uh, enjoyed talking about it. Next week we're talking about um, Back Country, which is a 2014 film. It's a little more in the esoteric uh, nature. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of horror film you have to hunt out if you're a horror fan. And if you are a horror fan, and if you like the idea of a story of two hikers who uh, are caught off trail by a black bear then Backcountry really is the film for you. It's mm. very visceral, very scary, very frightening. I think, Chris, you actually described this to me as one of the most frightening films you've ever seen. Yes, I did. And uh, you, when you were watching it, said that you had to stop the film at various points because it was stressing you out well, too much. Tune in next week to find out why. Yes. Um, in the meantime, do head over to howtosurviveshow.com and if you, uh, if you hit the menu button in the top right, you can find the coming soon section and you'll find that the page for Backcountry, if you've seen it, uh, you can leave a suggestion on how you'd survive in it. And if you haven't, you'll find a link to buy it on Amazon if you, if you want to. Mm. And I highly recommend it. I really do think it's one of the best horror films I've seen this year. Mm. High praise indeed. Mm. Uh, also, if you want to get in touch just generally, suggest a film or suggest other ways of surviving, then the email address, as ever, is howtosurviveshow at gmail.com. Exactly. And if you enjoy the show, do leave us a review on iTunes. It's five stars. It's not a problem if you uh, if you want to leave five stars. Yeah, it's fine. Don't yeah. don't don't be shy yeah. with your stars. Five is five is good. Yeah, we like five. Yeah, anything less than that is an insult. So <laughs> just just five is good. Yeah. So until next time, here's to swimming with bow-legged women. <laughs> Very good. Mm.